so students welcome to all of you in lecture number 13 till lecture number 12 we have uh, discussed all the aspects of limit set methodology and various type of uh, features or uh, parameters which we have to discuss and uh, we have to use in case of design of any rcc section so currently in lecture number 3 we will be going to discuss design of singly reinforced beam and what are the various steps which we have to follow uh, in the design of any singly reinforced beam so these are the steps which we have uh, just uh, for your suggestion and uh, for your uh, guidance you if you follow all the steps then ultimately you will be able to design a singly reinforced beam section so let us uh, go through the details so first of all by step number 1 in step number 1 we have to just uh, list out the grade of materials that mean which grade of concrete and which grade of steel we are going to use in the design of that member that a singly reinforced section and if the information regarding the grade of concrete or grade of steel is not given in the design then you have to assume accordingly so that's why you have to assume some suitable grade of concrete and a grade of steel if this type of information is not provided in the design problem so all these uh, grade of concrete as well as grade of steel you have to select based on the recommendation of is 456 so when you go through the is 456 guidelines then you will be able to understand that what should be the minimum grade of concrete which we can use in case of rcc structure and uh, what should be the minimum grade of uh, steel which code is suggesting so based on the various uh, weather conditions or you can say exposure conditions in technically so based on the exposure conditions and uh, uses of the structure grade of minimum grade of concrete has been recommended by is 456 as well as guideline regarding the grade of steel are uh, briefly mentioned in the is 456 so based on the information or guidelines available in is 456 you can assume a grade of concrete and grade of steel initially for the design purpose and the, this grade of concrete or grade of steel can be later on we can uh, just uh, change the grade of concrete and the grade of steel as per the requirement which you will be able to understand completely when uh, you will go through the design problem so in step number 2 we are going to fix the beam dimension so beam dimensions mean width of the beam as well as depth of the beam section whether it is a uh, effective depth of the section or whether it is the overall depth of the section so here few guidelines you can follow in case of design of singly reinforced beam so first of all let us uh, go through the guideline how to assume the width of the beam if you are not available with any information if you are available with some restrictions that mean uh, architectural point of view if some restrictions are mentioned then you have to take the width of the section accordingly otherwise you can assume and uh, later on uh, you can uh, do the trials so when you are going to design a section first of all whatever the information is not available in the design problem that you have to assume and uh, that will be considered as uh, your first trial so first of all let us uh, fix the beam width b based on the architecture requirements if any if there is no restriction or no recommendation from architecture requirement then you can uh, randomly choose a value it may be 250 mm 300 mm 350 mm whatever we so uh, let us uh, uh, just assume 300 mm width of the 
rectangular beam section just for a trial which as I already told you that after going through the various checks if required then we can just uh, change the dimensions accordingly. So second point here is effective depth of the beam and how to fix the effective depth. So first of all when you want to fix the effective depth of the section you can uh, just uh, decide the effective depth of section based on the MU limited value and what is MU limited if uh, we have already discussed in the previous lectures that means ultimate movement of a resistance that is the limited movement of a resistance which as per code code is limiting the maximum or you can say ultimate movement of ultimate limited movement of a resistance of a section for a particular grade of steel so we can use this formula which we have already discussed that MU limited is depending upon FCK that is grade of concrete and dimensions of the rectangular section where K will be a constant parameter which will be depending upon the grade of steel particularly and uh, this information is available in IS456 and in previous lecture we have discussed all the details in a very detailed manner. So from this formula we can just rewrite this equation as the required depth of beam can be given by this formula you can calculate you can put the MU limited value you can put the value of K that constant FCKB and accordingly you will get some value for the required depth of uh, cross section of the beam. So whatever be the value you are getting from this formula, let you get it is a 415 or 412 like that, then you can round off it at a higher uh, value. That means if you are getting 416, then you can uh, go for 450, 430, whatever be. That is uh, your first trial. So that's why we have to adopt a higher value of effective depth so that we uh, will be getting results in the form of under infrastructure as code is restricting the design of a beam section as under reinforced section so when you increase the depth of the section that means what is the required depth this is the limiting depth which has to take care of the limiting movement of a resistance so accordingly if you provide the higher depth of the section then the value of movement of a resistance will ultimately increase so it will be considered as a safe type of trial. Now step number two let us say continue it. Then uh, after deciding the effective depth of section you will be uh, just uh, terming it as let us adopt the value of uh, effective depth that means you will be able to write here let us adopt effective depth of section is equal to so and so millimeter so now another aspect is you have to assume the diameter of the main steel which you are going to provide as a tensile reinforcement so you can assume the diameter of steel as per the availability of uh, steel bars in the uh, market you can say or as per is code and uh, similarly you can adopt or you can assume diameter of stirrups which we are going to provide and later on we will be able to discuss what is the meaning of stirrup and currently you can consider it as just like a hanging type of uh, that uh, in earlier uh, lecture we have discussed that there will be some hanging bars and uh, on that hanging bar some ring will be provided uh, and in technical language that ring will be termed as stirrup so that's why we have written here phi s that it is the diameter of the stirrup bars and uh, phi may be termed as diameter of the main reinforcement so you can assume here let us provide 12 mm dia 14 mm dia 16 mm dia steel bar keep in mind whatever you are assuming you are just uh, doing a trial it's not final and uh, later on various checks we have to apply and then ultimately you will be able to decide the exact diameter of the 
steel bar. Now, here we can uh, try, uh, we, first of all we will be trying to understand that we will be providing main reinforcement in a single layer. So later on we may have to require to provide reinforcement in two layer, but uh, for as a starting point or a first trial, we will be considering, you can write there, considering the main reinforcement in a single layer. So then we can adopt a suitable value of clear cover to the reinforcement as per the IS456 guidelines. You may remember in one of the lecture, previous lectures, I have discussed with all of you that what is the purpose of a cover to the reinforcement and how the cover is decided as per the IS456 guidelines. So for more clarity, you can just go through the previous lectures. Now, based on the information which we have assumed, that means diameter of the steel bar, diameter of the stirrup, and the value of clear cover, we can find out the overall depth of the section. So, overall depth of the section will be effective depth of the section plus half of the diameter of the main bar plus diameter of the stirrup plus clear cover. So, ultimately, you will get some value for the overall depth of the section and which you can again round off and uh, ultimately you will be able to calculate that means what is the effective depth of the section which you are going to provide and what is the overall depth of the section which you are going to provide. From this diagram you can see here uh, these yellow colored circles are showing the main reinforcement that is tensile reinforcement and uh, its diameter will be phi. So, when you are taking into consideration center line of the bars, so from top of the uh, compression side of the uh, section, you can see topmost compression fiber, the distance from topmost compression fiber up to this level will be the effective depth of the section. So, that's why when you are going to calculate the overall depth of the section, that is capital D, then you have to add in effective depth this much value. So whatever we this and uh, what it will be? It will be half of the diameter of the main bar which we have taken here. Then diameter of the ring that is stirrup, so which we have taken as phi s, and then this will be the clear cover to the reinforcement as well as the stirrups. So what we are able to do up to now that mean uh, up to this step we are able to decide the dimension of the beam along with the diameter of the reinforcement that means we are able to decide what is the width of the section overall depth of the section effective depth of the section diameter of main reinforcement bar diameter of the stirrup clear cover as well as effective cover so effective cover will be this will be the effective cover so you can say this uh, all these three parameters if they are added then it will give you the effective cover to the reinforcement. Now step number three as we have already discussed again in the previous lecture that what is the importance of the span length calculation and how to do the calculation for the effective span length. So, we can evaluate the effective span of the beam as per IS456 guidelines, which we have already discussed in details. You can refer the previous lecture for more clarity. And uh, clause number 22.2 of IS456, you can refer to just calculate what is the effective span length of the beam based on whether the beam is a cantilever, whether the beam is a simply supported type, or the whether the beam is continuous type. So now let us uh, try to understand step number four. This is a very important step. Here we have to do the calculation for loads as well as bending moments. That means what are the various type of loads which we have to consider uh, for the calculation of the total load and uh, that may be applied and uh, some partial safety factor you can uh, use as per the guidelines and then you will be able to get the factor loads and uh, from the type of the beam whether it is a cantilever beam simply supported there are various formulas 
in uh, structure analysis which you have already studied and uh, based on that formula you will be able to draw the shear force as well as bending one diagram and based on that bending one diagram you will be able to calculate what is the maximum bending movement which the beam is going to be <coughs> subjected so based on that bending movement cal calculation what will be the maximum bending movement and uh, based on that you will be able to decide all the other factors such as the dimensions which we are which we have already assumed now we have to check whether the dimension that means the section which we have decided is able to take care of the bending movement as well as other type of stresses so very first point is self weight of the beam you know that in the previous step we have just assumed the dimensions of the beam so based on those dimensions we can calculate the self weight which is generally termed as dead load also so self weight of beam per meter length so you will be uh, getting the value of self weight as a u in the form of a udl uniformly distributed load so you can uh, write it as wd d is for dead load of self weight which is to be calculated based on the assumed dimensions and unit weight of the concrete so you will be calculating and the unit will be kilonewton per meter so unit of the self weight will be kilonewton per meter so ultimately it will become udl and uh, it's, uh, you can note down here that if there is any other type of dead load or fixed load that may be included in the udl or uh, if there are concentrated load accordingly you have to again find out what is the maximum bending moment on the basis of various type of loads uh, you have already studied in the structure analysis then another important type of load is the live load on the beam and you have to decide live load you can assume if it is not mentioned in the uh, numerical problem or design problem you can assume uh, and that is also taken in the form of udl and having units kilonewton per meter and generally provided in the design problem so this information is generally provided in the design problem which you have to solve which you have to do otherwise if it is not available uh, that mean it is this information is missing either you can assume or you can take uh, the assume, you can assume based on the information available in various uh, version of IS 875, 875 part 1, part 2 like that. So based on the requirement. So you are able to calculate his self weight then you will be able to calculate live load and ultimately you can add them then it will be total load on the beam section and uh, just uh, uh, keep in mind when we are talking about the dead load then we are also including the load due to any finishes as if the on the beam there may be some finishing load so you have to consider all the type of dead load in this uh, wd and later on when we will be going to design a problem you will be having more clarity so after getting the total dead load or a total total load that is dead load and live load and applying various type of relevant partial safety factors as per recommendation of is 456 we can calculate factored ultimate bending movement that is mu is factored ultimate bending movement and the unit will be kilonewton meter so this much is the bending movement which is coming on the section of the beam due to the various type of loads and we have to design the section so that it can safely resist uh, this ultimate factored factored ultimate bending movement so that means your section your reinforcement which you are going to design should be such that uh, they will be they must be able to take care of or resist this much bending movement and uh, maybe other effects due to the bending movement now step number five you are already aware that in earlier uh, uh, earlier lectures even one of the numericals we were calculating the x u by d ratio 
that is depth of neutral axis divided by factor depth ratio and uh, from factored ultimate bending moment which we have calculated in the previous uh, step number four that is mu based on this value you will be able to uh, calculate what is the x u y d ratio so you can calculate x u y d ratio now important point is how to calculate x u y d ratio then we can uh, refer uh, uh, this uh, formula and uh, this formula we have already discussed in the previous lectures so because uh, we have already in detailed discussion we have done so that uh, you may remember definitely you will be remembering the formula this formula we uh, already have taken from is code so that is the formula for mu limited so here we want to design the section such that mu limited uh, first of all we will be designing that considering mu is equal to mu limited so for mu limited this formula is given and by rearranging the above equation you will be getting this formula and uh, you can uh, just uh, remember this formula for uh, calculations which we are going to do later on and uh, okay so based on this uh, you will be able to calculate x u by d now you have to check whether this x u by d uh, x u by d is lesser than x u max by d or not you must be remembering how to get the value of x u max by d so your x u by d must be less than x u max by d why because then only the section will be designed as a under reinforced section if your value x u by d is more than x u max by d then it will be over reinforced type of section and you need to redesign so you must be uh, just uh, you can uh, arrange the value of d such that your x u by d should be less than x u max by d now step number six here we have to calculate what is the area of steel required that means how much area of tensile reinforcement is required so here we are assuming just for the purpose of calculation and later on we will be applying various checks so ultimate movement of a resistance you can equate equal to ultimate bending movement that is factored ultimate bending moment which you have already calculated so based on this we can find out how much is the area of steel required in tension zone and uh, that is AST so AST can be calculated and uh, you may remember that this formula we have discussed in the earlier lectures that MUR is equal to 0.875 FY AST D minus 0.416 XU you may be remember that this was the force and uh, this was the lever arm so based on the force and lever arm you will be able to calculate MUR so based on this formula you you can just rearrange it and you can get the value of area of steel that is MUR by 0.87 FY D minus 0.416 XU now you may remember that XU by D you have already calculated and from that information you can put the value of X by U here d you have already decided fy you know that which is the grade of uh, steel you have taken mur already you have taken uh, equal to mu that means factored ultimate bending moment mu will be mur so this information you can get and ultimately you will be able to get the area of steel required in a millimeter square so asd required you can use this formula as we have discussed and now you have to uh, see carefully this is the AST required area still required to take care of the ultimate uh, factored bending moment but when you are going to provide you must provide that is AST PP is area provided AST provided slightly greater than AST required so that means whatever the area you are getting from this equation you must provide higher uh, area than this for the safety purpose so from the assumed diameter of the 
tensile reinforcement you remember uh, we have assumed phi value in earlier uh, steps so based on that first of all you have to calculate the area of one bar cross section area of one bar and that is given by pi phi square by four so from that we will be able to calculate the required number of steel bars and you should try to uh, keep the value uh, number of bars preferably less than six it will be better for because otherwise you have to apply various other considerations so no issue if it is coming more than six it does not mean that you uh, you can't provide more than six but prefer it should be preferably so that you can uh, just uh, change the diameter of the bar accordingly so very important point is you have to check that whether these bars suppose you have calculated six number of bars now you have to provide six number of bars here so that means you need to provide some uh, center to center spacing some edge distance you have to provide so that uh, you must uh, uh, go through the codal guidelines and you must check whether these bars can be arranged in the width of the section which we have decided which we have provided with the required spacing between the bars as well as edge cover so that means these bar must be arranged and there must be sufficient uh, spacing between the bars if uh, you find that uh, space required is more that means if the width of the section which you have provided is 300 but based on the calculation you have to require more than 300 then you can try other options as well as you can provide more number of bars in two layers so that means one layer of bar here one layer of bar here like that you can provide now step number seven here we have to check whether the steel which we have provided in the previous uh, steps that means number of bars we have provided AST we have provided whether that area of steel which we have provided is as per IS 456 guidelines because in 456 some guidelines are provided regarding or you can say limits are mentioned for providing maximum and minimum area of steel so here we have to check whether the area of steel which we have provided is obeying IS 456 guidelines or not so minimum area of tension steel in a beam shall not be less than AST minimum with this formula you can get from the IS 456 so based on this uh, calculation that means 0.87 85 sorry into width of the section which you have provided affected depth of section grade of steel you should work out do the calculation what is the AST minimum and then you have to check whether the uh, area of steel which you have provided in step number six is more than this AST minimum then it's okay otherwise you have to do the another trial and uh, you have also check whether the maximum area of tension reinforcement and the code is recommending that maximum area of tension reinforcement should not be greater than this much so you have to first of all find out AST minimum then AST maximum then you have to check whether the steel area which you have provided lies within these two limits if it is lying within these two limits then it's okay so here we have to check as I already discussed that whether AST provider is following the above restrictions if it is not following then you have to design uh, design need to be revised such that it should be as per the IS 456 guidelines now step number 8 here you have to apply the check for deflection you have to check whether the deflection in the beam due to the loads as well as the whatever be the section we have decided material we have decided and based on that what is the deflection which is going to come and uh, whether that deflection is within the permissible limit mentioned in IS 456 in clause number 23.2 in uh, previous lectures we have discussed how to calculate the deflection what is the maximum limits restricted by IS 456 so you can refer the previous lecture here we are not going into such a detail 
so you have to apply the check in the beam which need to apply to check where that the deflection which is coming in the beam due to the load application is lesser than the limit specified in clause number 23.2 so i uh, mentioned here also that in previous lecture we have discussed in very detailed detailed information is available in the previous lecture regarding how to apply the deflection check similarly step number 9 you have to check the development length required uh, here it is wrongly written that as per deflection so as per clause number 26.2 so development length you have to check as per uh, just ignore it development length as per IS 456 and 26.2 clause number 26.2 and uh, this method is discussed already in the previous lecture you can go through the guidelines and similarly step number 10 this is also very important step that is the check for the shear stress so we have we are not going to discuss here today and uh, later on you, uh, you can refer clause number 40 for guidelines and later on when we are we will design the any singly reinforced section then we will be able to explain you in detail how to apply the shear stress check so method will be discussed in detail in design problem and the step number 11 which is also very important and is the last step you have to draw a drawing in which you have to show the all the reinforcement detailing so detailing mean diameter of bars how many number of diameters how many number of bars are provided what is the diameter bar what is the clear cover effective cover spacing between bars so all this information uh, we are going to discuss in design problem so that mean you have to follow these 11 steps and uh, then your design will be complete thank you